Now this is interesting. G and Q! Fool's gold! Greetings, Street Fighter fans! It's been nearly a year since the last video in G's release. I threw out a variety of theories on G, so how'd I do? Hmm. Looks like I was totally wrong. What was I? Since G's release, not much was revealed about our Gaia glorifying global leader. Though yet again, interesting details emerged. I waited on making this follow-up video because I was hoping Capcom would offer more details in Season 4. Anywho, let's look at what we do know. First of all, the guy has a serious earth fetish. Also, I didn't expect this, but in English, he has a posh southern accent, excellently provided by Christopher Corey Smith, who played Rufus in Street Fighter 4. Heck, at the reveal at EVO last year, he even cosplayed as G. This was set up by cosplayer Jesse Pridemore. G's computer savvy enough to be aware of the impact of social media and mindful to set up an account on FooTube or at least instruct someone to do so. He didn't just buy a costume and do this abruptly. There was some planning done. His Earth tattoos cover his entire upper body and constantly move. In the pictures attached, you can see what he looks like shirtless. He is an eccentric but competent fighter. He beat Rashid and Manat, though in her case, she was distracted because she couldn't get a read on G in battle. More on that later. His normals and specials mirror Q but with infinite more grace, finesse, and style. Q appears controlled, pained, and miserable, while G is showing off, dancing, and having fun. Be sure to check out a vid by YouTube user Palmbear. They perfectly compare all the moves and animation G and Q share. Link is below in the description. Tell them all, Shaki sent ya. Surprisingly, he is a person of interest to Rose. He has an ambiguous nature, before Minot's defeat, she speaks about him and Bison in the same breath. To be fair, she doesn't think he's exactly like Bison. But it's interesting that's who she compares and contrasts him to before being unsure if he has powers or not. Of all the people to place him next to, Bison is a suspicious and ominous example. Was she merely talking about fighters who wield a natural key, or something closer to a thirst for conquest, or global change? Nothing concrete is given. Also, Rose sends Manat to meet him, since she's not exactly sure about his nature. Which is curious. While in her naivete, Manat thinks he's dumb due to the fool tarot card. There's also the post-battle dialogue of the fighters, they don't know what to make of him. For the most part, the cast do not take him seriously. However, G isn't just rambling. He shows insight into many of the fighters. In Colleen's story, she is shown to be lost and without direction until Gil finds her. G is aware of this fact when he says, Wanda no more, for I'm here. Thus appealing to her need for purpose and direction. Despite Jury's intent, Hence, exterior, she's a broken person in pain from the brutal murder of her parents and traumatic loss of her eye. She yet again can see past her violent and, uh, lustful exterior when he says, Even when sorrow and pity fill our hearts, no, precisely in such times, we are one! He's basically saying, it's okay to feel hurt, we all can relate, so you don't need to keep up this act. Strangely comforting and heartwarming. In general, he is chasing unity, and doesn't even have a harsh rebuke of Bison of all people. He's not naive enough to think Bison's good. He knows what Bison is doing is a problem, but he's lenient with him. He calls his goals distorted and tries to convince him to be better. Again for the sake of unity. 
On the flip side, he is strangely hostile to Vega. As I've said, he seems to generally have an everything is permissible attitude, with few exceptions. He wants Bison to be a better man. He gives friendly advice to Ed that his words can define him. He asks Corinne not to look down on him, and seems a bit upset at Manat for not taking his mission seriously. Even to Fang, the purple poisonous predator, he says, Interestingly, Dalsim cannot sense evil in him. This could have two meanings. The simple is that he's a good guy. The other gets more complicated. Note, he's not saying he's good. But whatever his intentions, Dalsim cannot sense evil in them. This could mean that whatever he's doing, he believes it is just and necessary for the greater good. Though, if Rose, who has demonstrated amazing precognition and overall psychic abilities, cannot get a good read on him, he may have an ability to block mental scanning and hide his true nature. Again, not enough evidence is given really to dig into this, further than what we've done so far. Speaking of Rose, it should be noted how important the Fool card is. This was previously held by Ryu. In Super Street Fighter 4, Rose's intro states that Ryu is the Fool, a bearer of reckless heroism, the only man who could beat Bison when the stars properly align. However, this is not its only meaning. We'll get to that later. G has three costumes, his default President of the World look, his battle costume, which appears to be a classic gentleman hunter, and his infamous story costume. Interestingly enough, his story costume is anything but. It is my theory and hope that more story content is on the way before an inevitable sequel. Ono has stated something special is coming in August. Who knows what that may be? Well, Evo is only days away, so let's wait and see. Speaking of story costumes, each color references a little something. From the mask, to the Joker, to even Dick Tracy. On Capcom's CFN website, they make an allusion to Q. Last video, it was noted that according to the Shadaloo surveillance profiles on CFN, Q was already active as of Street Fighter V and was currently being tracked down by Viper. Viper, interestingly, is friends with Rashid. Rashid's Twitter feed is the source of several cameos. User Effie Perpnite has an avatar of a crimson Viper and also is referred to as Maya. Crimson Viper in Street Fighter IV was referred to as Maya also, so it's safe to say we all know it's her. She also instantly provides Ryu's GPS location to Rashid to seal the deal. Being friends with CIA spies must have its benefits, eh? With Rashid being the first to battle G and also expose him to a greater audience, was this part of Viper's investigation into Q? I could very well be wrong about G and Q being different people. There is no concrete evidence for either point, but tons of speculation for and against the idea. Part of my reasoning against the idea of them being the same is that Q appears to have a sullen personality and doesn't want to stick out or be noticed, and seems to be under someone else's control, rather than having a secret identity and carving out his own destiny while trying to gather followers. G looks very much in control of his actions. If we're focusing purely on aesthetics, G's take on Q's costume still has an element of style that distinguishes it from the original. His mask has a slight resemblance to a hockey mask, rather than Q's, which resembles a chrome face. Speaking of faces, SRK lore thread regular Doctor and Dark found the image of an unmasked mod of G's story alt. Underneath his mask, he appears to have some sort of ink stain, and instead of glowing yellow eyes like Q, G's normally purple eyes are blank, 
glowing, and pink. Q has a plain red tie, while G has patterns. I can't quite make it out, but I think they're continents. Got a stamp brand. The coat itself is cut much shorter than Q's, but has several large buttons and an overall more stylish look, with straps on his shoulders rather than just a plain trench coat. G is wearing driving gloves with a patch of skin exposed, while Q has plain white gloves that hide all of his skin. His pants have a lined pattern on navy blue slacks, while Q has plain gray slacks. If Q as we know him is already active, then why would he dress in a similar but still fashionable style? Why the simplified mask rather than the shell mask he's seemingly locked into? Why is the default color drastically different? Why is he alternating between a flamboyant showman and a restrained pained tank of a man? After G's release, the Japanese CFN page for him posted this picture of a blonde duo in G's story costume, with the description, Bonus! Mysterious Garments! <clears throat> That's all they say. G still hides many secrets, but we hope you find him entertaining. Power to the Earth! Thanks again to SRK regular Midgaro Sorm for the translation. Two people, a man and a woman, wearing G's distinct style of clothing, standing at attention and behind the mask, have glowing eyes. Hmm... This photo makes me double down on the idea that G is some sort of mastermind and may be controlling scores of people that he's kidnapped or may have loyal followers who dress identically. Whatever the reasoning, he enforces that these people match his image. Speaking of scores, President of the World, the trailer song by Dan the Automator, Domino, and Del the Funky Homo Sapien, has some incredible lyrics that point to G being more than he appears. It's rather ominous in some parts. President of the world, he just appointed himself. Be happy, you don't have to think for yourself. Uh, hold up, let's let's go be closer. A map of the globe appears to be the focus. On his right arm as if to conquer it. You got in gold, the American continent. As the trailer nears the end, G begins speaking in his calm tone, slowly getting more passionate, until in the finale, he is angrily yelling, What is it that we fight for? It's undoubtedly something very deep. The power of all the people on this planet makes us one. I will be the protected father to everyone. There is no one on Earth who can stop us! If we're all to be united as one, who is this opposing force? At first glance, you'll notice G is battling Urien, then Bison, a true boss among all bosses. While Urien is not a final boss, Gil is not playable, outside of Urien's Halloween costume, that is. Thus, he appears to be a stand-in. He and Bison represent the major evil factions of the series. They're not rivals to the heroes of the game. They are true villains, threats to the entire world. Urien being the president of the Illuminati. Bison being the master of Shadowloo. I previously theorized an element of mind control being part of his aims. What if, simply if one does not share Jim's dream of unity, they are forced to conform anyways? Whatever his plan seems to be, he makes it seem that everyone has to join together for it to work. Those that refuse or fall short of his dream may be converted into entities like Q. The next select quote points to another less than benevolent image. To conquer it. G wants to conquer the globe. Dressing up as a president and posting to social media didn't make a dent till he started fighting Rashid, a celebrity in the fighting world. Then, his over-the-top nature gathered a following. From there, his arcade ending shows his influence grew across the globe. From Japan to Turkey to Kenya, 
For now, he may be a celebrity, speaking rather ambiguously about coming together, but he doesn't say what exactly his aims are. He appears to be rather driven and urgent in his call. Interestingly enough, it's not rallying the world against Bison's evil or any immediate threat. It's a digestible, ambiguous message for mass consumption. The next item we're focusing on is probably the only solid offering of who or what G is. After Rashid's sound defeat, the focus goes to the psychic pair of Manat and Rose. Rose soundlessly offers up some information on G in the form of her famous tarot cards. I know nothing about tarot or destiny. It's above my pay grade. So I did the next best thing and consulted an expert. Thank you, Mr. Von Dingo. What a bizarre name. So, Rose, first, can I ask what you were doing during the Black Moon incident? My time and attention were required elsewhere. I'm very busy. Yet you're on my show! So far! <clears throat> the mysterious G is represented by the Fool card. In tarot, the fool means he is on a path of self-discovery and armed with unlimited potential. The white rose is purity and innocence. What's strange, however, is the lack of a dog. Typically, a small white dog is present that warns him of danger, representing loyalty and protection. The mountains are future challenges, but one's not currently among his focus. It does not mean that G is an imbecile like my enthusiastic but inexperienced apprentice mistakenly thought, but rather a man starting on a journey. There's more to this mysterious challenger than we currently know. It is more than a little troubling. Amazing work. Much appreciated. Give Maggio and Manat my regards. <clears throat> Again, like before G's release, we don't know a whole lot about him. I really enjoy this character, whether he's genuine or a villain in disguise. I keep leaning towards him being a villain due to my above points, but also, look at his depiction in some of the art. He looks downright demonic in Bengus' special artwork for the game. That is not the face of a hero. That is not the face of a benevolent man. That is the face of typically an end boss. I'm just saying, there might be something more here. Also, with how Arcade Edition's entire aesthetic has shifted to gold-tinged showbiz, I feel that his importance is significant, and the full impact of such has yet to be seen. For now, that's really all we have. G has a bright future ahead of him, and it looks like true to Rose's prediction, his journey has just begun. Oh, and uh, one last thing. Capcom released a fully playable run-and-gun game, starring G for April Fool's Day. He's made quite the impression, hasn't he? Well, until next time, folks, I'm your host, Shock Dingo, and this has been Shocking Showcases! Don't leave just yet. There's more to see. <sighs> Even though Street Fighter V takes place in the late 90s, due to this game being a prequel to Street Fighter III, which took place in 98 and 99, and our real-life society moving on, they added modern elements to help us better relate to the social aspects of the fighters. If anything, this isn't that bizarre. The Street Fighter world is home to advanced technology that dwarfs our own efforts. So, having cell phones in a very modern internet culture in the 90s isn't that outlandish. First up, we have FUTUBE. This is a YouTube equivalent, but it seems geared towards the explosive popularity of fighting in the Street Fighter world. Several fighters have Let's Fight videos and the IJWPW, Iwashigamihama Japan Women's Pro Wrestling League, as well as Dan Habiki, have vlogging videos as seen by links in G's story mode. 
A surprising number of Street Fighters have a social media presence. Rashid and G's character stories feature several cameos in this way. Okay, now that's it. Hey guys, I wanted to thank everyone for watching this video. All your support means the world to me. It's what keeps me going. While I was recording and setting up the last parts of this video, the, um, the summer season, unfortunately the trailer was leaked well before EVO. And as you can tell, I've had significant delays. Um, I was hoping this would come out around EVO, but just things got in the way. I got busy, I got distracted, and well, now the video is coming out in November, so <laughs> some things may be out of date, but you know, things just got out of my control. I still hope you enjoy it. I still hope that uh, the majority of things make sense and uh, my jokes weren't too terrible. <laughs> but either way, uh, thank you very much. I really want to say thank you to Manuela Malasania. She is my first Patreon and I really appreciate all the help. She's a cool person, she's making her own game, so you might want to check that out. A uh, link is below in case you want to check it out. If you would like to support the channel and help it grow, check out my Patreon, check out my Ko-fi. It helps the show grow. All funds go towards compensating voice actors, hiring beautiful sprite artists, and music and all sorts of other extras that I uh, can't handle myself. So thanks, and I'll catch you guys later. Shark Dingo out.